Welcome back everybody inside the anatomy lab. This is going to be our second installment of the shoulder muscle series and today we're going to take a closer look at shoulder depression. In the first part we discussed shoulder elevation and we looked at all the muscles that are necessary to raise our shoulder blades and today we're going to discuss the exact counter movement. So we're going to look at all the muscles that we use to bring our shoulders down again. In the end, just like last time, there will be an exercise that you can complete and this exercise will help you to feel these muscles a little bit better and of course to memorize them. As a starting point for today's session, I chose the trapezius muscle and maybe you can already remember some of the things that we discussed last time. Here you see the ascending part where the fibers point upwards and then the transversal part where the fibers point towards the spine. These two parts in combination help us to depress our shoulder once it's elevated. So you can see this happening here. Of course, in reality, there would be a little bit more movement in the fibers going on. And I'm pretty sure that I can improve this in the future. But I think you still get a pretty good picture of what is going on. I think this is enough for now for the trapezius and let's move on to the latissimus. Here you can already see my smart finger pointing out the direction in which the fibers of the latissimus are flowing. And just admire for a moment how the latissimus is hooking on to the inside of the upper arm to pull on the arm and therefore on the scapula when its fibers contract. It's always amazing for me how intelligent our body actually works. Let's move on to our third muscle, the pectoralis minor. Pay special attention to its tiny insertion up on the coracoid process and how it flows to rib 5 to 3. Again, you will see what happens when this muscle contracts. It distributes its force onto the little process and helps the scapula to depress. Let's move on to the last muscle of today's session, the pectoralis major. Again, you can see how it inserts on the outer side of the upper arm and how its fibers flow down to the rib cage and the sternum. Just like the trapezius, the pectoralis major is subdivided in three parts. In our case, the lower part, the abdominal part and its fibers are responsible with their contraction for the shoulder depression. That's enough for the pectoralis major and let's go on and exercise a little bit. Just like last time, I want to encourage you to feel one of the muscles that we have discussed, feel its origin, feel its insertion, try to isolate it and then shrug your shoulders and Try to depress your shoulder just with this one muscle. Once you're comfortable with this, choose another one. Also, I want to encourage you to think about movements where you need shoulder depression. You can think about climbing or pushing yourself out of a pool. I'm 100% confident that if you repeat this little exercise a couple of times, maybe in the next couple of days, you will surely remember all of the muscles that we have discussed today. I hope this has been helpful for you. It was my pleasure and I hope to see you soon back in the lab. Have a good one, Alex.